Welcome back to Svalbard, everyone, and welcome to the gorgeous world on the water. We have traveled across the fjord to a place called Borebukta. Here we will be anchored for a few days with the incredible backdrop of the Nansen Glacier. It's our first boat trip of the year, so we're very excited to start the season. If you haven't been here before, my name is Cecilia and I live on Svalbard, an island close to the North Pole. And if you have been here before, welcome back. Good morning from the first night in the boat. I slept a lot. <laughs> Christopher tried to wake me up at 10. I'm like, no. No, 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 but we also went to bed at like 2.30 because of the rogue walruses. <laughs> and uh, there's a walrus colony just on the other side from here. And now we have one rogue walrus coming our way. It's like 30 meters away from the boat or something. So we're gonna have to go and take up the dinghy because they are known to kind of go and ruin stuff if they want to. Oh my God, there it is. It's so close. Why do they spin? Oh my God, it's coming our way. Oh my God, I need the other camera. It's open and I'm not prepared for this. There it is. To your right, Christopher. For the one walrus that was out here checking us out. It's so nice to be out on the ocean. So freaking nice. There was a lot of ice when we came in. A lot. Christopher had to do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna drink my coffee now and then we are gonna go on a hike. And we need to keep our eyes and ears open because we have heard for the last week that there's been a polar bear and her cub around this area. Not in this exact spot, but at this massive glacier and we also need to keep our little boat away from the walruses that's like just as much of a pressing matter <laughs> we are deep in svalbard adventure around all of the animals water on to make some coffee. We've brought our beach chairs, packing all our gear for a little adventure. The funny thing is also, weather is crap all the way like this, all over there, all the way here, <laughs> where it's like blue skies, beautiful, no wind. And that's just, you know, for once we chose the right spot. This is so beautiful, Christopher. Oh. Like unreal. Now we're gonna do a loop around the island here just to make sure there aren't any polar bears or maybe walruses. And then we're gonna get on from that side, I think. We just need to, you know, check it out first. Oh my gosh. This is just incredible. Here to drink some coffee. Just the coffee, na the coffees. Because of the pommy rigsack, somebody's getting comfortable. Good to brag, Rim. Yeah. It's safe to say that he enjoys it. I can't believe this is just so beautiful. 
We're going to put you on a leash in a minute, Grim, so you better come back. Yes. We get to experience many incredible moments in nature here on Svalbard, but still, the scenery manages to take my breath away, and some moments you're just certain you will remember forever. And this was one of those. The massive Nansen glacier right before us, a complete stillness laying over the bay, except for the creeks and the cracks from the thousand-year-old ice. Many of the glaciers on Svalbard are around three to 4,000 years old, and about 60% of Svalbard land is currently covered by glaciers. It's truly one of the most breathtaking landscapes to see. I don't think I've ever seen anything as beautiful as this. This is the most unreal setting. Like what? And there's no wind and it's just sunny and gorgeous. I don't know what to do with myself. Chris, if I almost feel like I want to cry, it's that beautiful. Do you also feel the same? Oh, yeah. What do you think about the view? The best view. <laughs> Not in many words. <laughs> I agree. The best view it is. here. You know, I, th I think I said a funny joke the other day. People were talking about how uh, the marathon was like a buffet for polar bears. And then I said, yes, just like a sushi conveyor belt. Because we were, because we were just like running on the same course going around. <laughs> <laughs> and it could just be there just picking one of us out at any given moment. <laughs> It will be coming back. So it's like, no, maybe not that one. And then, ah. Uh, I thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I gotta tell you again about my jokes. So you can hear them. Oh, yeah. I just saw a bunch of polar bear tracks over here one flying my drone. So we're gonna go check those out and see how new they are. Let's hope they are old. They're super old. Very good. They go all the way like that. Where's the goose? We stayed by the glacier for a few hours, just taking in the moment before returning to the boat for some dinner. We listened to a documentary podcast while eating, Grim came back home from his evening pee ashore happier than ever, and then it was time to go to bed after a long, gorgeous day. Good morning. What an absolutely 
incredible morning. As you saw, Christopher took Grim in to the shore. That's how he pees. So we take him in every time he needs to go pee, which is not that often, but maybe every six hours because that's usually enough. When we take him like every four hours or something, he doesn't even pee half of the time. But we do go in a little bit more often than that, maybe. Anyway, it's coffee time. Cell, cell phone cell phone reception here and to be honest this is one of my favorite things with getting out of the village because i need to get away from my phone because i work on my phone and i have noticed the last i think week or so i have been scrolling like i've been obsessed it's like I've, i don't know i've just you know ended up just going i don't know what to do and then like it disrupts everything my sleep my productivity and it's like an addiction, I've realized. Not just for me, but in general, social media. Or not even social media, just your phone. Because I can scroll looking at anything. I think it's that, you know, you get constant entertainment that way. And it's so uncomfortable being bored. You know, imagine going to the bathroom without your phone. Like, what do you do? Well, this is our generation. So, when we go on cabin trips... I can do nothing on my phone, which means I just put it away. You think you upload them a day? So we're gonna be here for a total of four days, which is pretty darn nice for our first uh, trip this season. We were thinking about relocating today, but looking at the weather, we're in the only spot that seems to be nice. <laughs> today, I'm gonna spend a lot of time with Selena Sardothian with my book because I need to know what's going on. There's just it's just so good. Oy 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 where to begin? This oh okay much can have since this is our first trip of the season the boat is a mess so sorting that out is on today's schedule. During winter, our boat is parked on its trailer on land because there is basically no indoor storage available. So during that time, we take out any weather sensitive items and bring them home and the rest we just put inside the boat. So we had the side cabins full of ropes and survival suits and tools and lots of other things that one needs on board a boat. So today we had to sort through all of that and organize all of the things and put them back in the right place. This is going back in, this is gonna go. It's looking better. It's a lot more organized at the moment. So we have this thing. I think that we can have it here, but then I just need to cut it there. Start cutting it here. And let's see what happens. We gotta be flexible here. Because I need somewhere to put, you know, my little mask. Now that we've cleaned the entire boat, we're gonna do a little boat tour if you haven't been on our boat before. 
this is the, I don't know, the, the living room. <laughs> Here we have the beautiful kitchen, which is actually pretty big. I also love that it's all like wood and old and we love it. This one works perfectly. Water, everything you need. Come with me, we're gonna go downstairs. This is actually very big, don't you think, Christopher? It's all right. It's super big. And then you also have these beautiful lamps. I think are really cute. Oh. Uh, the only thing is that it's a little bit cold at the moment because it's, you know, it's always cold outside and the ocean is cold. So sometimes it's a little bit chilly in here, but it's very comfortable. You can also, this is for the look, for the look. I don't have a lot of words, but oh, it is cozy. So this is where we sleep. This is the bathroom. Take a peek inside. Oh, it's all so clean. If you want to take a shower, this is what you use. And then you can pull it all the way up here and it becomes a shower. Or you just go and then you have this curtain so you can go all the way around and the toilet is there. So it's very handy. This has become the closet and also kind of like the room for all the camera gear. I don't know the original boat when it's built, but they built this boat between 98 and 2000, I think. Yeah, the engines they put in 17 or 18. Yeah, it's a good boat. I think it's a super nice boat to have up here. It works good. We adding. upgrade, adding one more heat system. I bought a Airbus Special last, last autumn that we're gonna put in the yeah in the in the in the bedroom. So we're gonna have warm and cozy there I think next week. This must be where the polar bear last walked. It looks to be not very fresh though, which is good. It's actually really warm because there's no wind. I think it's about seven or six degrees today, maybe. But as soon as the wind disappears, it gets very, very toasty when walking. We are gonna go up there so we have an unobstructed view of the glacier. More steps going towards the glacier where we're going okay but this also doesn't look so new because it's dry i well i thought this was going to be the place where i wanted to stop but we need to go one further to this a little mini mountain because I think that's like just in front of the glacier. We have seen more polar bear tracks over there. They all look a few days old. We keep checking with our binoculars and we cannot see any. Uh, so, so far, so good. But I think the closer to the glacier we get, we kind of need to just, you know, be a little bit more vigilant. Is that the right word? I think so. Just keeps our eye, keep our eyes open. <laughs> this is why we hike in these wellies on these kind of places. Oi, yeah, blah blah blah, but it's too deep. We did it.
Bialetti coffee is seriously some of the best coffee it makes and it, it's just so good oh my gosh Christopher we were out for I think three and a half hours yeah. it was such a good walk standing there with that view in the background like it's unreal it doesn't even feel like you know real world it's so beautiful. Now we're going to have a late lunch. Christopher, I think you need to take a nap after this because you told me you've slept for two hours. Yeah. Somebody needs much. to sleep. Yeah. Why didn't you sleep more? Because of the ice and walruses? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he stayed awake guard, which he often does. So we sleep a little bit in shifts when we are on the boat. You know, also to, you know, keep us from dragging anchor and stuff. That looks very nice. That's a good one, little. You can take all of that. You can take it here, then. Yes, but take it. This is a good one. Just getting some eyes. Wait, hold on, no, no. Draw me from food. Then come on, Jay. You must drain not here. What do you got there? Your harvest? Yes, I'm harvesting some rum and coke ice. <laughs> Where should we put it? We should have it in here. Christopher, it's taco night. Let's see. Are you ready for It's twenty past eleven. I swear, it's impossible to keep any sort of like regular rhythm this time of year. You just have no idea when it's starting to get become like nighttime. And if you don't constantly like check the clock, time just flies and suddenly it's almost midnight. I swear, I think we had dinner at like 10.30, I don't even know. Tomorrow I'm hoping for some sunshine. Today we didn't get any. It's also supposed to be a little less windy than it is. So the forecast is obviously not right. That's kind of standard. A tip for your nails, any sort of oil on your cuticles. It is life changing. Then just like this.
The next morning, I started the day with the coffee and the fresh air, and since the weather looked good, it was time to start heading home. Boat trips like these really are amazing, and I'm just so thankful that we get to have these experiences. We had some more coffee before starting to lift anchor and head out. We stopped by the walrus colony to see how they were doing, and they were just as relaxed as always. The walrus is among the many different animals you may come across on Svalbard, and they can be found here all throughout the year. They often spend time resting on ice floes, but in the summer and autumn, you often come across them chilled out in walrus colonies like this one. Walruses are pretty picky when it comes to their resting spots, and they are known to stick to specific areas where the conditions are good for both access to food and a nice place to hang out. As you can see, the walruses are basically laying on top of each other, and this is very common. They are extremely social animals and are usually seen in packs. The weather looked great where we were, but a little darker towards where we were going. The weather is always an obstacle when adventuring on Svalbard, and it doesn't matter if it's winter or summer, it's not uncommon to end up stuck in a place for longer than expected. And it's never worth it to head out in bad weather, speaking from experience. But today it looked worse than it was, and it ended up being a really nice trip home. When heading out, we often go slow, which is around six knots, and going home, we wanna get home fast, so around 20 knots. This trip takes about one and a half hours at that speed. We are back home again in our cozy cabin after, I think I say this all the time, but one of the most beautiful boat trips we've ever been on. It was just unreal. So today the weather is a little bit gloomy outside. So I'm just gonna take one of those days where I just relax, I chill, and I don't do that much stuff. And that brings me to today's sponsor, which is Brilliant.org. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, data science, and computer science interactively. Right now I'm doing the course data analysis, and what is great about it is that I can use it and directly apply it into what I work with daily. Brilliant is built for busy people, and you can master big concepts in as little as 15 minutes per day. I think the reason why I was never very good at these kind of subjects in school is because how it was taught. If we would have just had this more interactive and learn by doing approach, I think I would have learned so much more. It's also proven that interactive learning is six times more effective than passive learning. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, head to brilliant.org slash Cecilia, or just click the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's premium annual subscription. And thank you so much to Brilliant and thank you to all of you for watching and I will see you guys next week. Have a great day. Bye.